Hello friends, welcome to EC Academy. In this lecture, let us understand mass device design equations. We know that the mass devices like N mass and P mass operates in three regions like cutoff region, linear region, which is also known as triode. Next is saturation region, which is also known as active region. And in these three regions, the mass transistors follow different equations. So mass devices like N mass and P mass operates in three regions. So these devices are having three region of operation. First one is cutoff region. Next is linear region. And third one is a saturation region. And in all these three regions, the mass devices will follow different equations. Before understanding the design equations, let us understand the important concept in mass devices. Here, let us understand the geometry of MOSFET. If you observe here, the transistor channel is having two dimensions. First one is the length of the channel and the second one is width of the channel. So here, L indicates channel length which is the distance between source and drain. As you can see in this diagram, the distance between source and drain is known as the channel length. And W is a channel width. So channel width is the width of the gate. As you can observe from this diagram, so width of this gate is nothing but the channel width. So here you need to remember that the current flowing through the MOSFET will depend heavily on the ratio W by L. So you need to remember the current flowing through the MOSFET will heavily depend upon the ratio W by L. So it is completely dependent on the channel width divided by channel length. So this is about the geometry of uh, MOSFET. Now let us understand mass gain factor that is represented by beta. The mass gain factor will tell us how efficiently the MOSFET can conduct. So it can be represented by beta that is equal to mu COX W by L. So mass gain factor beta tell us how efficiently the MOSFET can conduct. So, beta can be represented by mu COX W by L. Here, mu represents mobility of carriers. So, if we say mobility of carriers, which means it represents how easily the electrons or hole move inside the MOSFET. So, mu represents how easily the electrons and hole will move inside the MOSFET. So, it is a mobility of carriers. So here COX represents gate oxide capacitance per unit area. So COX represents the gate oxide capacitance per unit area. So COX can be represented by epsilon OX divided by TOX. Here W by L represents the geometry of the device. So here you need to remember higher the value of beta means stronger current drive. So if we are having the higher value for beta, the MOSFET will have the stronger current drive. Now let us understand the process gain factor. The process gain factor represents the capability of MOS transistors process technology to conduct current. So process gain factor represents the capability of MOS transistors process technology to conduct the current. So why it is known as process factor? Because the value Kp is completely dependent upon the manufacturing process of MOSFET. So if we say manufacturing process, which means the material properties, the oxide thickness and the mobility, we can represent Kp by using the formula mu COX epsilon OX divided by TOX. 
here mu represents mobility of carriers so mobility of carriers is nothing but how easily carrier move in the substrate epsilon ox represents the permittivity of the gate oxide and tox represents thickness of oxide layer now let us understand the carrier mobility the carrier mobility tell us how easily charge carriers moves so it can be represented by mu is equal to average drift velocity divided by the electric field so carrier mobility tell us how easily charge carriers move inside a mosfet so mobility of charge carriers can be given as average drift velocity divided by electric field now let us see the threshold voltage and body effect normally threshold voltage is a constant but we can represent threshold voltage by using the formula vt is equal to vt not plus gamma multiplied with square root of vsb plus 2 phi f minus square root of 2 phi f so this is the formula to represent the threshold voltage here vt not is threshold voltage at zero body bias vsb is source to body voltage gamma is body effect coefficient and 2 phi f is twice the fermi potential here you need to remember as vbs increases vt will also increase which means we need higher vgs to turn on the mosfet so if we say we need higher vgs to turn on the mosfet which means the on time of the transistor will increase the time required to turn on the transistor will increase now let us understand the short channel effect when mosfet get very small the effective channel length can be given as l minus delta l here l represents the channel length and delta l represents the channel length reduction at high vds so delta l represents channel length reduction at higher vds this short channel length will reduces the output resistance and increases drain conductance so this will reduces the output resistance and increases the drain conductance now let us understand the equation for drain current in mosfet operating regions the first region is cutoff region in cutoff region mosfet is off which means there will be no conduction and hence we can say id will be approximately equal to zero so in cutoff region the mosfet is off there will be no conduction hence the drain current will be approximately equal to zero the next region of operation is the linear region in this region the voltage that is applied between drain and source will be between zero and vgs minus vt so this is the range of voltage that is applied so that the mosfet is operating in a linear region so the voltage between drain and source should be greater than 0 and it should be less than vgs minus vt in this region the mosfet will be acting like voltage controlled resistor and the drain current can be given as beta multiplied with vgs minus vt into vds minus 1 by 2 beta v square ds so here beta is the mass gain factor vgs is the voltage between gate and source vt is the threshold voltage vds is the voltage between drain and source next is saturation region in the saturation region the voltage vds should be greater than vgs minus vt so the voltage vds should be greater than vgs minus vt so that the mosfet transistor will be operating in saturation region 
So here the drain current can be given as 1 by 2 beta into Vgs minus Vt whole square. With channel length modulation, the drain current in saturation region can be given as Id is equal to 1 by 2 beta into Vgs minus Vt whole square multiplied with 1 plus lambda Vds. So, here lambda is channel length modulation factor. So, here you need to remember the drain current is completely dependent upon Vgs minus Vt in both the formulas. So, here in the second formula 1 plus lambda Vds will increase the slope of a saturated current. Here you need to remember, so whatever formulas we have discussed, these formulas are for NMOS transistors and for PMOS, VGS, VDS and IDS should be taken as negative values. So, in this lecture, we understood that MOS transistor have three modes of operation. First one is cutoff mode or cutoff region. Next is linear region. Third mode of operation is saturation region. So, the mass gain factor depends on mobility, oxide capacitance and geometry of MOSFET. The body effect increases Vt and Vsb. Hence, the MOSFET needs higher VGS to turn on. In channel length modulation, Id slightly increases. And finally, you need to remember PMOS equations are same as NMOS. The only difference is we need to take negative value for VGS, VDS and IDS. So, here you need to remember that the design equation help us in predicting how the MOSFET will behave in a circuits like small signal amplifiers to digital switches. This is about MOS device design equations. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.